And those sensual tones mean it's it's time for more poker time. That's right. It's episode three here of session number two, a crazy session. You can see Aaron is still stacking chips from the last hand that he played. That was against K6, where he flopped a full house. What a monster pot. And uh, you just got to pay off a guy like Aaron when you have top pair, as K6 did. Yep. Now here, Wonka's going to open under the gun. You see he's sizing it up even more. 35 now. Yeah, I think we've seen him do this on episode one. Yeah, you're right. He's we decided have. the game is so loose. And look at this. Action Aaron calls with seven deuce right away. The strategy proves to be correct. It's really an extraordinary thing. But... He gets three bet by Batiste pretty quickly. No, that's here. a call. Oh, that's just a call. Okay. Maybe the size actually slows Batiste down a little bit. I don't know. That's a hand you'd expect him to three bet. Maybe it's also because it's Wonka and it's his under the gun range. It's probably right. a good idea to call. Batiste is well aware that Wonka is the tightest player at this table. And uh, that's a good flop for Batiste. Yeah, a huge flop, really. Wonka is first to act, and he's deciding to continue with this sort of a no equity spot for him. Right, I think he's uh, banking on his image to get people to fold most pairs that aren't jacks here. Yep. That's about half the pot. I imagine if it's heads up, Batiste will just call. It looks like it's not going to be heads up, no, though. I mean, Action Aaron. He did call with seven deuce and flop the pair. What are you going to do? I mean, if you're going to call a raise with seven deuce, you flop middle pair. It should be absurd to fold right away. So Wonka can't like that, but if you're going to get called, you'd want to be called by Action Aaron, not by Batiste. But guess what? Batiste is definitely going to call. He so. might raise. It's not unreasonable. He is reaching. It looks like a raise is coming. Yeah, it does. Completely reasonable. He's obviously raising. Happy to get it in right here. Top, top, and then up flush draw. This is probably going to get through. I mean, Wonka is certainly going to fold. And then it comes down to Aaron, who is going to fold quickly. I'm going to let this go one time. One Showing time. it. <laughs> Big lay down for me. I mean, this is what this I game is. I love this guy. This game is just the greatest. He's showing. <laughs> he's showing everybody that he called the tightest player at the table, opening seven x under the gun when he was plus one, with the worst hand in poker. I That's mean, what he's deciding to show everybody. Is, this is, is amazing. That is what's happening. Here's your VPIP just to back that up. There's Action Aaron and Randy at 58 percent each. Wonka. They are fighting for supremacy on the VPIP front. Yeah, Wonka, who did open under the gun, was at 23 percent. Action Aaron did outflop him though. He did. That's what happens sometimes when you. Flat the old seven deuce. Yep. There's a limp now from Action Aaron under the gun. He's feeling so good after that four or five hand. He just wants to play everything. Not He's definitely going to raise this one up. Just 20. I would like to see a bit of a bigger size out of Batiste here. We can get calls from Aaron pretty much 100% of the time. He's usually got a worse hand than Ace-10. Let's oh, get yeah. some value, you know? I agree. Wonka decides to call it the queen four off. I'm surprised. Oh, no, no, he doesn't. I was going to say, I'm surprised. Graphics guy's a little backwards here. It happens. Good flop for Batiste. Looks like Rand it's a three-way pot, I think. Yeah. I think we just don't have Aaron in there. Yeah, but we know he had the king seven of diamonds. I believe Randy's going to at least call once. We never know what Randy's going to do, but yeah, he's definitely calling. Yeah, and Aaron did fold. I wouldn't be surprised to see Randy lead the turn here. He does a lot of that. But he does check here. Batiste, I would expect he's going to, yeah, he does check it back. And here's the river. Batiste definitely going to... I expect him to get a, uh, a bet in on the river. Yeah, Randy he's going to go for value here. I'm going to say probably a small bet. I'm going to guess... Oh, he's just checking it back, it looks like. Well, he was thinking. No, he does. I'm surprised. I would have liked to see at least like a $45 bet or something there. Try to get a little bit of value. We've seen Randy donk out on turns and rivers both when he has and when he doesn't. So you would think ace-10 is almost always good here. If Randy had a jack, he would have bet the river. And if he had better than a jack, he would have bet the river. I think Batiste got a little gun shy having seen Randy take so many aggressive actions so far. He mm -hmm. didn't want to get check raised. But against Randy, you could consider calling a check raise with ace-10 on that river. <laughs> I also don't think Randy's going to check raise that often as a no. bluff. Like, we haven't seen him do that. Well, with his exact hand, he's probably just calling with the five. Yes, yes, of course. Did you get a raise and then add the barf going? <laughs> oh, there he is. Exactly. <laughs> want to see That's that. what Batiste just said. I'm all right. We want mm. to see Batiste didn't want to have to barf call, as he calls it. Well, you got to make less money. Barf calling would have been profitable. <laughs> barf calling is always profitable, Jonathan. <laughs> Poker 101. Here's Digital Dan with a premium hand. By the way, Thorpe opens 5-3 off under the gun. I mean, this game is just off the frickin' hook, people. Inside info, Thorpe claims 5-3 to be his favorite hand. Oh, is that true? So I think that's probably why he's doing this. He's not necessarily an action Aaron or Randy type guy where he's always going to open bad hands under the gun. 
But apparently he's going to open this one because yeah. he's got an emotional attachment to it. All right, here we go. He's out of position with the 5-3 off against the 3 better against one of the tighter 3 betters. I would have liked game. to see a slightly bigger 3 bet, by the way, from Dan. I would like to see Dan check this board. I agree. It's this hard to get value. I mean, so hard. I guess Thorpe could have an ace and you can get Any ace, ace Thorpe's an going to call, but he has a lot of hands that are not aces, and he's going to take a stab on the turn if we check back a lot. I think checking is probably better. If he has an ace, also, we can get value on turns and rivers. I mean, it's not. I guess you can. I mean, you don't want to run out club, club without charging him a little bit. It's not the end of the world to bet a hand this good. No, it's definitely it's not. fine. But against Thorpe's, maybe. Thorpe's range is pretty wide here. Like, he loves to call three bets, that guy. He's not he a folder pre-flop, and so he's got a lot of hands that yeah. are just going to have to give up on that kind of a board. Let's give him a shot to, to take a stab on the turn. Or improve. From a metagame perspective, though, we should be betting ace-king if our opponents are paying attention, or Agreed. else we can't ever bet that in three-bet pots. No question. You're totally right. And that's a reason to do it. And Dan now is getting in the bad hand under the gun mix. <laughs> this I limping? I mean, no, that's not a good thing to say. At least he is. Bryce is going to open it up with uh, pocket fives here. Randy can't call fast enough. With the 6-4. He's gotten over. Two flush draws. For sure, Aaron's not going to fold. Wonka folds the king-eight suited on the gun, which is extremely tight for this game. Yes. <laughs> Thorpe is going to three-bet. I would have liked to see a bit of a bigger size. You see, uh, Wonka gave himself a pat on the shoulder as Thorpe three-bet it. Saying, like, <laughs> I did good. I did good. I didn't put that 20 bucks in. What, what do you think about the sizing? Um, I think it's, it needs to be a little bigger. Maybe, we're out of position. Maybe 110, 150. Yeah, there's too many people, and, and, and we're out of position. And Aaron knows this is a real trouble hand against this spot. Even though he's getting great odds, I think a fold is in order here. He makes a good a good fold for sure. I don't know why Randy's in this pot. I mean, I do. But, I, you know, like his, his hand doesn't really demand it, but K6 really had to call. I'd rather have Randy's hand than A7 off, though. Yeah, me too. And somehow, some <laughs> freaking way, Randy flops the best of it. And Aaron would have flopped the best of it, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thorpe's going to continue. I don't know. Three players. He's going to get through some of the time. I mean, he's repping an overpair. Look Ooh, at this. Ooh, K6 is raising. This is interesting. Well, that's going to... That is just brilliant. Look at that. He gets the better hand to fold. The other hand with a lot of equity to fold. I think... Um, that is a game theory disaster normally, but it wasn't that time. I think part of it may have been he wants to make sure Randy gets out of the pot with whatever he has. Yeah. Thorpe's sizing might have been transparent there because he, he bet really small on that flop. How much did he bet? He bet 100. And remember, yeah. he had 3 bet to 80 and gotten two callers. So yeah. there's like there's like 300 in there. Yeah. A third of the pot. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible that's what K6 saw. Or maybe he just thought... I'm going to find out right now and take it down sometimes and fold the rest of the time. I don't know if he has enough chips to fold Yeah. after that, actually. I couldn't remember what I had. Lucky for him, Thorpe didn't have an overpair then, I guess. Here's another hand he's definitely going to play. <laughs> just limps Interesting. It. Randy's going to do the raising for him. And he says, uh-uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word. I, I pretty well, yeah, Wonka's just going to fold these hands. He's just waiting for better spots. He is, but against Randy's range, you could easily 3-bet there. Yes, you absolutely could. It would not be crazy. It's probably a better play to 3-bet than fold. But I kind of like it better than calling with all these guys behind I, you. I wouldn't want to call there. Ace-9 off is just going to struggle to uh, to make a lot of money in this kind of a game. Especially it looks like there's a been a 3-bet. Where did that come from? Was it Action Aaron? I think I... Pocket fives, action Aaron. Oh, K6 has, has, has pulled the limp re-raise with the two oh sevens. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. And Randy's called, by the way. And now action Aaron calls with the two fives. This is not what K6 wanted. No. I think he felt emboldened by that pocket fives hand, the hand before. What do you do with Dan's hand here? You're getting four to one. I think you fold. You're, you got stacked to pot issues. Yeah, you do. K6 only has 770 left. He's going to have one and a half times the pot if you call. It's just not a good deal for 9-8. Obviously, you can flop it, but I don't think you flop well enough, enough of the time. Perfect example. I guess K6 and Action Aaron are going to have to get into it here. Yeah, I think so. Although, K6 checks. With 770 back of Aaron Betts. Doesn't he just have to move in? <laughs> I don't even know what to think right now. <laughs> this guy's the best. He's just being honest. To check or to bet? What do you make of this if you're an opponent of Aaron when he, when he has all these antics? I don't know what to make of it. Turns out, now that we can see the cards and everything... Seems like he's usually telling the truth in these spots. Yeah. He has two fives and doesn't know if he has the best hand. 
I think a bet is an order, honestly, after two checks, though. It looks like K6 has ace-king. Yep, and it looks like Rainy doesn't have anything. And Aaron does bet. Let's see how much he bets. 225. Feels like K6 should be moving in here. Right, it feels a little weak to limp three bet and then just fold to this bet. With, one, with you know, we can beat everything but a queen. But this is a bit of a scary spot. He's just going to throw it away. Weird hand. Really weird. Wow, if K6 continues... Aaron's going to call once, and I don't even know what's going to happen. I guess K6 gets to move in on the turn a lot. I don't know. Aaron might fold. It's possible, depending on the sizing that yeah. K6 chooses. Yeah, he might fold the turn. I don't think he's going to fold the flop. That's an interesting strategy K6 came to that pre-flop with, with, the, with the two sevens, knowing he has a bunch of aggressive players behind him, looking to make it a little bit harder for them to call pre-flop by letting them raise and then him re-raise. The problem is these guys will not fold, and they're going to no. have position on him. And two sevens rarely flop well enough. To feel great, and so that is that's the one problem with that hand. I'd yeah. almost rather do it with like an ace queen type hand, I think the two sevens. Ace queen would have been good on that board. Yep, K six with another playable hand, but this time he just throws away the five four suited. Wow. Wasn't that offsuit? I thought it was five four clubs. It looked, maybe it looked like an offsuit five four to me. Well, we're gonna have to, you know, I don't know what to do with that. We're not rewinding. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> another limp from Action Aaron. We got a limp fest going on. And here we go. A few playable hands in here for sure. A lot of uh, card sharing. And Digital Dan flops best with a flush draw. Randy's got a gut shot. Checks right through. Digital Dan has to love that. And he makes... Nobody has a six, unfortunately, for him. He's just going to win this pot without much contest, I think. That's a yeah. little bit too bad for him. No one has a six. No one has an ace. No one has a club. This, this hand is over, unless someone loses their mind, which is not impossible, but it did not happen. Not a big enough pot for anybody to really care, I think. Yeah, I agree. That's so unfortunate, though, when you're in a multi-way pot as Digital Dan, you're waiting for your spots against this crazy lineup, and you make a big hand, and everybody's just like, oh, yeah, I fold, no problem, it's easy. <laughs> it's a bad feeling. Well, once the checks through, I mean, really, he can only get called by a big club or a trip sixes because almost all these guys are going to bet their aces yeah. on the flop. Almost all of them. Yeah, except Wonka might check an ace. Oh, and look at this. Randy has raised dark, it looks like. All right. He makes it 20 in the dark. He does have the ace deuce. Wonka with a real hand. Because for Randy, this game does not have enough action. Right. Wonka's going to bump it up to, let's see how much, how big he makes it. 75. It's it's perfectly Pretty fine. good sizing. Thorpe's going to just call with the two sevens. That's which fine. You can you can decide to fold also, especially against Wonka's range. I don't know, man. I mean, the implied odds are. I guess are there. we're just set mining. That's really all we're we, doing. We 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 don't have to only be set mining, but we can be mostly set mining. Randy's in, even though it looks like even though the graphics don't say so. He's got the ace deuce. Yeah, this pot's a little bit bigger. There, there it go. is. And that's a great flop for Wonka. Yeah. Look at this. He should get some money out of Randy here. And it's nice. Oh, it checks through. Interesting. Wonka checks. I like it. Unless a seven comes, then I wouldn't have liked uh, it. <laughs> three, uh, three is now going to be a problem for Wonka. Also a deuce. Randy's going to lead here. That's not crazy. Is it 125? 125. Easy call for Wonka. Wonka can really do nothing but call. If he wants to go hyper exploit against Randy, he can try to raise. But Seems it's, like a bad idea. it's tough to really pull that off. It's kind of... Randy might fold ace jack if you raise. I mean, yeah. possibly. He might call, but he might not, so it's, he may just get the value you want. Hearts come. There's a check. I expect Wonka to value bet this. I'd be surprised if he does. Now, Randy has the nut blocker. If he wanted to go super elite, he could check shove. He could, but he shouldn't need to with um, with an ace in his hand. He blocks top set. He blocks the nut flush. It's kind of cool. It's true. I, I expect Wonka to bet here. He's going to have to bet. It's just I think our hand as Randy is just a little too good to make a race. Turn our hand into a bluff. Let's I don't know. See. Against Wonka now betting, though? And Once, Wonka bets kind of small. Yeah, He's Randy just get, puts the chips in. Trying to get value out of exactly this kind of a hand. Yeah, and it works. Well played by Wonka. It's possible Wonka... I don't, yeah, I guess Wonka really won't be able to find a call if uh, you do the check raise there. I mean, once Randy checks the river, Wonka assumes there's no two pairs in Randy's hand. Well, I mean, with the heart coming, it's possible. It's possible. But, but Wonka's clearly targeting worse aces when he bets 125. He's trying to say, yeah. you can call with all your baby aces. No problem, Randy. I think it would be a cool spot for a check raise. I agree. Ace of hearts is a really cool blocker there. Yeah, I kind of did. And I don't really think... 
I don't really think Wonka can find a call, especially when he chooses that sizing. He's choosing that sizing to try to get called by weaker aces. Yeah. We also haven't seen, I don't think, any check raise bluffs on the river yet, right? No, I don't think we have. So it isn't like that's a big part of anyone's game so far. Not surprising. You don't see that in most people's games. Man, the, the ranges. Look at these ranges. <laughs> Thorpe opens 4-3 off. Digital Dan calls 7-5 off. And K6 correctly raises. Somehow. How does he know? I would like to see a bit bigger sizing here out of position. Look at this. Look at this. This is just this is an extraordinary game we're in. Dan can't fold if at this point. Folks, if you're ever playing a game like this, just lock the door so no one can leave. This is this is the game you always want to be in, right? This yeah. is incredible. So much action. So fun. So many chips fly in. This is this is why we play poker. Is Nobody anyone? flops anything here. Wow, really? Dan, Dan flops bottom pair, I guess. Yeah, it's reasonable for K6 to check there. It looks like a board that hits his opponents pretty well. Yeah. Well, there he goes. I would like a check here. He's got a bet. Weak kicker. Nobody bet the flop, so they're unlikely to have a queen. Maybe they have a nine. But yeah, I think checking, you're more likely to get called on the river than on the turn. Yeah, I agree. Doesn't At the same point, it's okay just to bet and take down what is now kind of a biggish pot because he three bet it. Right, it doesn't suck just to win a three bet pot without having to worry about a river. Yeah. I think what's important though is K6, if he checks some of his other hands there that aren't aces or queens, like two jacks, maybe two jacks is a bad example, sorry. King jack, something like that, that he would bet. If he checked the flop, he'd bet when that ace comes also so he can balance with some blocks. Yeah, that's true. That'd be important. Although I don't know if it's as important in this game. But in some games, it'll be This important. game, people don't like folding. No. Although they folded that time. Action Aaron, has got that huge stack. No longer in the snake or Chinese dragon style. And he's got four dudes. <laughs> 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 this is incredible. Thorpe with a reasonable hand. Batiste with a reasonable hand is as he well. Is he going to call or are he going to three bet? I think he's going to call this one. Obviously. Yeah, he's going to call. It's such a good calling yeah. hand in position against these ranges. Although in the last session we did, we saw Batiste three betting in spots like that. But it's true. He didn't necessarily have opponents that were going to call so frequently in that session. I mean, you can't get it through. You cannot no. have a, th a three bet is not going to win the pot almost. Randy's going to three bet here. With the, with the best hand. Two nines. He makes it 105. And look at this. We're just saying you can't get a three bet through, and so far it's getting through. I don't think but Thorpe Batiste is going to Thorpe isn't folding. Is gonna fold. Neither is Batiste. You're right. I think K6 should fold. He has to fold. It'd be. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. What is happening to Batiste? I can't believe he gave that up. Well, That's look at this shocking. beautiful spot for Randy. He's got Thor he's got two unders against him, and he blocks the straight flush card for Thorpe. <laughs> that is a scary board for everyone. Actually, Thorpe does pick up the flush draw. Thorpe yeah. may find a way to win this pot. Randy's Although, not a quitter, so this could go somewhere. Thorpe, Thorpe checks it back. I would have liked to see uh, him consider bet. And now Thorpe there. might think he has the best hand sometimes. Well, Randy, I mean, when Randy checks that flop, he's repping like an overpair, right? Isn't he repping like queens? Yeah, it looks like Randy has jacks or queens here. As Nine, Thorpe, we nines cannot, are similar. We absolutely cannot fold this Thorpe. By the way, Randy can also have ace-king very reasonably. Randy right. bets big here, by the way. He bets 200 to 275. I still don't think you can fold this Thorpe, right? We have a pair and a flush draw. Against, some, position. against some players, you can because it's a, a paired board, and the paired board is the aces. Agreed. Agreed. Like, Randy can have ace-10 ten or 10-10 ten, ten yeah. or ace-x. Ace Ooh. Wow. Well, so Randy's going to try and get value from an ace, which is not going to work out for him. If he found a way to check, it's possible Thorpe would actually... Well, he's got a pair, so maybe he'd just check it back. But maybe Thorpe would make a play. Randy can't believe his luck. He thinks he's probably behind. Yeah, he does. But turns out he was ahead the whole way. It looks like Thorpe has Jack-10 suited or something like that. Yeah, it does. So I got to believe if Randy... That Thorpe's going to fold pretty quickly here. That's 300 to 675. It's pretty strong to go check, bet, bet on this kind of a board. If Thorpe's going to call, what is he putting Randy on? Just a random two cards? King, queen, or random two cards. But Yeah, that's a good fold. Usually, if Randy had a random two cards, he would have bet that flop, right? That's the thing. Like, that's a flop to bet with your right. with your air, not uh, not check. Because you're giving up. You're sort of just giving up if you're checking, right? Yes, absolutely. Most, most of the time, anyway. Wow, Thorpe bets the flop. He might win right away. Maybe. 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 Randy doesn't quit easy. No. But if he bets flop and turn, which he might continue on the turn, he might not because he picked up a pair. Hard to know. It's hard to predict these guys. Yes, it is. Like, is Thorpe going to open this? Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. It's a nine and a six. Batiste. Nothing. This is definitely going to be called. Oh, yeah, at least. 
the Randy Wonka man. is maybe the only player who might fold this here, but he's going to call. It's too good to, to fold here. Yeah, he's already got $5 invested. But guess Aaron's what? Aaron's got a three bet. That's why you don't call. Why'd you call, Wonka? <laughs> Aaron correctly three betting the ace nine suited. And look at this. Thorpe cannot call fast enough. <laughs> Once Thorpe puts in chips preflop, he's, yeah. he's not interested in folding it's to, to preflop aggression. I mean, he does know that, you know, like... The flop changes things pretty dramatically. Right. It's and not, these, these guys are three betting a lot of hands. It turns out he's dominated here, but he often wouldn't be. Right. Action Aaron can have worse hands than 9 6 offsuit and be three betting here. He, he could have any two hand. He can have eight cards. high for sure. Yeah. He can have seven high for sure. We should make them do We've seen him do it. Well, once again, nobody flops anything here. How about you, Nick? Randy, Randy the backdoor straight flush draw. And Randy checks as well. Interesting. Everyone was giving up. Well, now Aaron's. Almost always winning this pot. Really hard to imagine Aaron's going to lose. King Queen is a possibility, I suppose, but usually, usually you see that bet on the on the flop. Usually one of the other two guys would have bet it. And they, they both can't fold fast enough. I think I would have preferred to see a check out of Aaron on that card. I think it's fine to bet it. Uh, like you, there's a lot of bad cards that can come for you on the on the river. That's true. Like kings and queens and clubs are all sort of puke cards. Barf call? Is that what they call it? Well, you barf. I don't know if you call. <laughs> Aaron calls. Okay. Maybe he does. I don't know. Aaron is Aaron's like really willing to bet. I don't know how willing he is to call. Like we see him really think about it when it's time for him to call. Yeah. But when it's time for him to bet, he's got no problem throwing chips at it. It's sort of like new school poker, really, you know. Mm -hmm. By new school I mean like twenty fifteen poker. You know, which is like twenty fourteen and a half, buddy. Oh look at this. Real hand. In this game, what are what do aces equal in this game? Two jokers? Like it's crazy. <laughs> you always have at least a set on the flop with two jokers. <laughs> yeah, look, Randy. Three bets to 55. Let's see how Batiste decides to play this one. Wait, I would like to wait. Ooh, Thorpe, Thorpe is in. Thorpe's in there. So now I would expect Batiste to put in a four bet. Thorpe just calling with a 10 7 suited. I would really expect a four bet here out of him. Yeah, he's going to expect a call out of one of his opponents, but I don't think he's going to get it. Well, let's see how he sizes it. 100 to call. Randy's gone. I don't know if Thorpe's gone, man. He nope. is not. He does. Look at the smile on his face. He's like, I just can't do it. <laughs> I got to put the chips in. He's like, come on, man. I'm 19% here. It only cost me $100. I haven't even seen the flop yet. The implied odds. The implied odds are, you know, for $100 more, <laughs> potentially worth it. I think Thorpe's going broke here on this flop with the stack to pot ratio. He's supposed to. Batiste has a monster flop, by the Thorpe way. Thorpe just moves in. And Batiste, of course, snap calls. And Thorpe's um, not dead, but close. Can't even be the tennis spades. And that's going to do that's it. That's a bad card. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it. And, yep, Thorpe is going to have to reload if he wants to stick around. Batiste has not had many breaks in this game. That was a nice break that uh, Randy decided to 3-bet. Thorpe decided to call the 3-bet. Thorpe decided to call the 4-bet. And then Thorpe flopped enough that he felt like he should move in there. Yep, all that. Work. And also, it's nice to have. I mean, I think Batiste is calling with any two aces there, two red aces also. But he, he is, but sure nice to have this ace of spades in your hand. Makes you feel a lot more comfortable. So much easier. But, yeah, he's calling either way when the stack to pot is one-to-one, -one, as he should. So we're going to have a dead small blind as Thorpe has gone to the uh, cashier to get some more chips. Yep. Not as good as aces this time for Batiste. He's going to let that one go. K6 going to join the party with the 8-3. No. Oh, now Randy's got the aces. Well, well. <laughs> and you see that he was mid-conversation. He did a good job with that. Is Wonka going to three bet this or call? I think it's just a call. I think it's fine to three bet it too, but he does call. So he's going to set mining mode. Wonka's playing standard knit good player poker against these guys, and that's not the worst idea. Well, these guys are putting so much money post flop. It can't be that bad to just try and flop a set and when you're only putting $20 and trying to flop a set rather than isolate with deuces, which is the other option. So I would guess. Dan, I mean, Randy, Dan has flopped a pair. So Aaron, is Action Aaron. Aaron's flopped a pair. Aaron's we're gonna, not going to fold. We're going to get a call out of Aaron. Dan's going to fold, I think, after Aaron calls. I think so. Although he might think that against these two guys, he could make a lot of money if he improves, and he might be ahead some of the time. This is all true. Look at this. Yeah, I'm surprised, he's finding a call here. I thought he was going to fold anyway with bottom pair and Aaron actually calling. Because what can you, you – you're, you're definitely behind to Aaron, and I hear what you're saying, but if the five pairs, it's hard to get a lot more money. That's not a great card for Randy. He can't love it. See if he continues anyway. Looks like it. It's not a bad idea to continue necessarily, although when you get raised, it's. I, I think it might be a bar fold spot. You're going to have to make a real decision, that's for sure. 
you can get value out of all of the queens still. But Queen Jack, of course, just got there. Queen Jack is going to make your life very sad right now. Action Aaron does not like folding. But he's got Dan behind him now. When he called the first time, he, he didn't know where Dan was. Now he knows that Dan's behind him with a call also. Dan rates to have a queen the majority of the time here, right? Yeah. Or 7-8, something like that. By the way, if Dan has a 6 even, he's got a better 6 than Action Aaron. Of course, if Action Aaron were to call, Dan would fold a 6. Yes, right? he would, but he would so, probably call with a queen. Yeah. I would expect him to call with a queen against these two players. He should be calling with a queen against these two players. Aaron really thinking about it. And once again, his tanks are legit tanks every time. He doesn't When he doesn't know what to do, he just takes his time, sometimes talks about it. He's not Hollywooding, I don't think, pretty much ever. He knows Randy's capable of, of multi-street bluffs. He's seen it before in this session. But he does correctly remember that Dan's behind him, and it's not a good spot. I think he would have called if Dan wasn't in the pot. Me too. So now what do you do as Digital Dan? You, do, you have bottom pair... Sometimes we're drawing dead. Sometimes we're drawing very thin. Sometimes we're ahead and not by a lot. I think we're never just, ahead by too ooh, much. Who is not folding? I think I would have folded there. I, I would have folded as well. When Randy bets into two players on the turn, sometimes he, he bluffs you, but that's okay. Ooh. I mean, that's a horrible card. It keeps for getting Dan. worse for Randy, by the way. Both of them. I mean, yeah. Dan, Dan, I assume, is not going to call a river bet no matter what. I think Randy's just checking, yeah. He's right to do it. It's a bad run out for aces. But that's, that's the value of being a guy like Randy or Aaron is you get calls like that on the turn mm -hmm. because you've shown everybody that you're capable of pretty much anything at any time. Yep. Having it is really good when, you're, when you have a reputation and image that these guys have. Now, the problem is a lot of times they're not going to have it. Yep. So. We're talking about the aces skipping K6. Yes. I like the way you're thinking. I kind of imagine a lot of you viewers out there are, are putting yourself in Wonka's spot in this lineup, thinking like, okay, how would I how would I navigate this? I'm going to be the guy who's going to not throw a ton of chips around. You right. know? So watching Wonka try and navigate, he's, of course, the uh, cash game pro. Does this all the time. Uh, yeah, watching how he, how he attempts to manage these stormy waters is uh, going to be interesting. And these are pretty standard hands for a three-way pot. You no, know, Jack six opens, of course. Yeah, you got the six four and the king eight. Everyone off suit. King eight smashes it. I mean, this is a monster against Aaron's range. No question. Aaron's gonna bet with a gutter and nothing else. I would have expected nothing less. Dan quickly folds. Batiste, Batiste, this might be a hold on moment for Batiste. Just hold on, almost no matter what the runout is. I agree. Like, there's a ten may may cost him a lot of money, quite frankly. He's got to hold on on that card. Oh, yeah. That's an easy, easy check call. Aaron's going to keep putting the pressure on. This I guy does not stop. I think if you're Batiste, you really want Aaron to bet big here. You're, you're hoping he does. I mean, it starts to get scary. Even against an action player who puts in a lot of aggressive moves post-flop, you sit in that seat, you start getting a little worried. You're like, well, maybe this is the time he has it, you know? Sure, of course. But, you know, that's okay. As long as he doesn't have it a lot of the time and you do this, right. you're okay. As long as he's unbalanced, we have to call. There's so many potential bad cards in the river, and but that is a great the one. safest of the safe. Will Aaron give up, or will he take one more shot? Aaron hasn't shown a ton of triple barrel bluffs so far. No. He's thinking about it, though. I'd be wondering, can he get Batiste off a queen or a nine? Or a king, even. With $325, do it. I don't think not not with Batiste's actual hand. I don't think maybe five fifty. That is maybe we go five fifty here. Yeah. Maybe we, yeah we got to go to the Howitzer, not the uh, not the Glock. And Aaron looks a little weak during his tank, but that's how he looked when he's really had it as well. So that doesn't really tell us anything. Absolutely. It's Batiste. Batiste looking a little bored there. <laughs> Aaron looks like he is reaching. He does fire. Let's see how much. Looks like... Is that 225? No, it's more. 300. 300 even. Wait, nope. No, it's more. 315? It keeps yeah. coming. 320. He must, he must have said the amount. <laughs> they do follow normal poker rules here, believe it or not. I mean, that is, That's the howitzer, right? I mean, he bets 320 into 430. So if you're Batiste, you're one. just putting the chips in and hoping? I think you have to call against Aaron, even though now you have to think, I'm losing a fair amount of the time, right? Would Aaron play ace-king like this? 
Jack Tennant. Can you show a card? You're telling me it doesn't. Tell me that's it. You pick. I want you to pick. No, you're, pick. Not, you're not in here. <laughs> nice I'm trying to show one card. But this is asking him to. I don't know if he's going to. You want to show me a card? No. I just want to know which one you want to pick. <laughs> I mean, that, I would pick the top. It might be a tell. I'd pick the top. No. I'll show you the other one. I'll show you the other one. Then I slide down when you're on call. It might be a tell. It might be a tell if I... Which part? Now that I know which one you want to see, now I know what you have. I'm willing to see the bottom one, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Batista is scraping for any information he can get. It'd be kind of interesting to show the jack here. I mean, it'd be kind of. I think it's a bad idea. Because now you're down to what Batista's then only losing to King Jack and Jack 10, right? <laughs> yeah. And Aaron said he didn't want to show him the other one, which means Take it wouldn't be Jack 10 because he wouldn't care. So now we're only losing to King Jack as Batiste. It's and clearly Batiste right. usually not. has a king or a queen here. So. It's clearly right not to show a card. You can't show a card, especially to a guy who's going to. I think think all this through. I expect him to find a call. Yeah, here. he's going to put this one together and just decide that Aaron is too bluff heavy. Yep. Sure, you're losing sometimes. And there he goes. That's a nice call. Yep. Aaron shows the jack six off because it's poker time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a nice. That's a nicely executed play by Batiste. It's. I mean, it's simple. It's just flop something against Aaron and hold on, but it's hard to actually execute it once you have the opportunity. I mean, look, that board ran out as clean as possible, and it was still a tough river call, right? <laughs> yeah. A heart comes, a 10 comes, a jack comes. I mean, a 10 comes, Batista actually does fall behind. Yeah. But even a jack, Aaron might turn a jack into a bluff for all we know. He very well might bluff a heart, too. And Batiste probably can't call when those cards come out. So Aaron's got a lot of ways to win. It looks like we've got a blind raise from Randy again here. All right. <laughs> Yeah, the ace deuce last time That's lost some money on idea. it. <laughs> he did not look at it. He has an ace at least again. Yep. That's nice. Cost some money, but last time, but sure. It's still better than not having an ace, usually. Ooh, beauty for Batiste. We'll catch up to the action here pretty soon. Maybe. <laughs> we know what's going on. Ooh, Dan is three betting. Digital Dan. Digitally can. Three bet apparently. We don't know what he has. We know Aaron has called. Dan is not called. He's three bet with nine seven off. That's real. That's yeah, his that, actual. Those hand. are those are the right cards. Batiste lets go of the nine eight. It says he three bet, but it was actually Dan. It was digital Dan. Don't worry about all the graphics. Well, it'll get it right eventually. And who cares? We know what's going on. We're just trying to give you a seizure. <laughs> digital Dan with the nine seven. By the way, Thorpe is in this hand also. Digital Dan you can't see flops. it, but Thorpe, Thorpe has a hand. Yes, and Digital Dan flops a double gutter. And overs. It's a pretty good flop for Digital Dan. Randy flops bottom pair. There's Thorpe with a C. Thorpe does have a hand also. Because he bet. Zero. Looks like he bet. He bets. Looked like 100. This is like archaeology. Trying to figure <laughs> out what's going on here. It's great. Thorpe, by the way, is not as deep as these guys. By any means. I think he has like 800 in front of him or something like that. Starting to catch up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh Digital well. Dan just thinking about what to do, and I think you think he's going to move in on Thorpe, or he's going to at least call. I'm hanging on to my king, He man. seems to be cutting out raising chips, which is not crazy at all. When you three-bet 9-7 off and you flop a double gutter, it's, it's not a bad spot to be aggressive. <laughs> These graphics are <laughs> everywhere. Sometimes the graphics guy struggles. What are you going to do? We may one day at one point find out what Thorpe has, but maybe not. There you go. Thorpe is... Thorpe's, Thorpe looks like he's trying to get all his chips, and he is. He's all in. Oh, weird Dan, spot for Dan. Dan is raised. I don't know what Thorpe has. Does he have a set here? Sometimes. Here we go again. <laughs> the <graphics. laughs> There's Randy's hand. All right, but let's not worry about the graphics. Let's just worry about what's going on. So, so Thorpe called the raise. Dan, three bet to 70. There it is. That's yep. what happened. Okay, good. We can't see Thorpe's cards, but fair enough. Uh, there's the flop. Dan's got overs and a double gutter, and he just got moved in on. And Thorpe had 9-10 to start the hand, so... <laughs> He's raised to 275, it looks like, Dan. Yeah. So, Thorpe's so it's another 600... And what, 40... 
635 to, for Dan to call. Getting close to uh, the action, getting right here. So Dan, Dan put himself in this sort of weird spot when Thorpe moves in on him. There we go. Now we're getting the right price. So if Thorpe has a flush draw, Dan's not in great shape. If Thorpe has a set or two pair, Dan's not in great shape. Dan calls. Does have outs against everything. I think we're going to get to see what Thorpe has It's going to be bad news, though. So, yep, oh, he flopped that. it. He flopped the straight. He's got the 4-7 of diamonds, and it runs out clean for him. Yeah, that's... Uh, the problem is Thorpe is hasn't made any moves like this post-flop. He's no. been pretty chill post-flop. So. I mean, but once you raise, it's hard to fold when you flop the double gutter with two overs. I think it's a mistake to raise and fold, but maybe the sizing could have been different so you can have an easier decision. Maybe if... Thorpe's stack were different. Yeah, it would have been a better time to raise if Thorpe's stack right. were bigger or smaller. But that, that's an awkward stack when Thorpe decides to move in. I agree. I totally agree. But it's it's not crazy to just to say you know what I've got overs in a double gutter. It's hard to even see that I have this much equity. Like I'm just gonna move in. It's it's okay. Or I'm gonna call. I'm gonna raise call. It's not the end of the world. It's certainly not. I don't love it. I I don't think I agree with you. It's probably a mistake based on Thorpe's sizing, but it's fine. <laughs> ultimately, right? I mean. It's Digital Dan. This stuff isn't even real to him. <laughs> if you recall, Digital Dan believes we're living in a simulation. Of course. <laughs> and uh, we're taking a little pause here to fire the graphics guy. We're going to yeah. new guy in there. New, new, new graphics person because you all saw what happened. It was, it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> all right. New graphics guy. New hope. New dream. New life. New hope. Star Wars. Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is the worst character in Star Wars. You oh, know it. my God. Non-droid. Non-droid. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think the bounty hunter in uh, in episode uh, five. Pretty bad also. Action Aaron anyway. <laughs> Going to raise it up. Thorpe finds a fold. Digital Dan with ace 10. You could, you could definitely consider three betting this against yeah. Action Aaron. He decides to call. Oh, Batiste has got a real hand. Here we go. Wow. Well, this is a three bet. Yeah. Easy three bet. Makes Gotta it get value. 70. You know, you know Aaron's rarely going to fold. I don't know. Is 70 big enough here? We want value from Aaron, and Randy's going to call with two fives here. <laughs> yeah. Batista already may be regretting his sizing being a little too small. Now, Aaron's got kings. Aaron's got kings. Wow. This could be an absolute train wreck for Batiste. What a dream spot. Batiste has been waiting for a spot like this against Aaron or Randy, and he happens to have just... One worse hand than Aaron has, and Aaron never has it. This guy never has it. He never has it. Remember, in in uh, episode one of this session, Aaron four bet Batiste with queen nine off. Yes, he did. So now he's got two kings, and I gotta believe a four bet is coming. And here it is. Looks like two thirty there. Easy fold for Digital Dan, and Batiste has got. I mean, this could go in right now. This could. This could, we could I get mean, it in pretty quickly. I mean, it's a quickly. lot to get in right now. I don't expect him to shove, but. If Batiste five bets, he's going to be committed to this pot. I don't know. I think I like a just call here because we're going to just fold out Aaron a lot of the time with a five bet, and we want to give him yeah. some rope, as they like to say. I agree. I agree. If Aaron has a hand like ace-king, we might be able to get even squeeze a little more value out of that or jacks, but the problem is if Aaron has kings or aces, we're going to be valuing ourselves to the tune of an all-in six bet. And if Aaron has queen nine offsuit like he did last time, he's, he's just going to fold, fold and right. we don't get any more value. Also, we do have the button, which is pretty sweet. It's fine to call here. I think I would lean towards a call. Me too. And you know what? I think if Batiste calls, Randy's probably going to call too, considering his implied odds. Well, they're all deep. Randy's the effective stack at 1.9K. Batiste does call there, and it looks like Randy is he, also going to call. sort of has to. There's 555 in the pot. It's only 160 to him. And all the implied odds be on top. I mean, it's it's an, sort of an automatic call, and he calls quickly. So this pot is swole, as they say. They do. And that is a board that's going to... I mean, Batiste might get in a lot of trouble here. Batiste might lose all his chips. On this flop, it's very possible. Let's see how... Aaron bets big here. 600 into 715. That's huge. And Batiste snap moves in. Well, like we said, he might lose all his chips. I mean, Aaron just has to call here, right? I mean, I don't see any way. Has he, call, has this he called board, yet? Nope. He's, 
He's not put the chips in. He's, he's studying. He's, it's fine to take your time here. There are some scary pieces to this, right? I mean, like, Batiste could have a set, and he could have 7-8 suited, potentially. Those are the only things we're afraid of, though, right? Everything else is fine. I mean, 9-10 of clubs, Jack-10 of clubs have got good equity against us. But we can't fold against those Ace hands. Ace-Queen of clubs has okay equity against us, for sure. We can't fold against that hand. We're, but we're getting in against everything. The only problems are basically pocket 8s and pocket 7s. And 8-7 right. suited. And those are not traditional 3-betting hands. No. Now, he might have done it against... Batiste does sometimes three bet light. So yes, he does. He can have those hands. But, I mean, doesn't ace, queen of clubs make all the sense in the world here? We don't have a queen, the queen of clubs in our hand. Ace, queen of clubs, ace, king of clubs, ace, jack of clubs. Even king, jack of clubs. King, jack of clubs, jack, ten of clubs, nine, ten of clubs. Queen, jack of clubs. It could be all those things, right? All he that might, said, this he is... He can move in with all those. It's a reasonable move in. This is the biggest bet we've seen on Poker Time so far. Yeah. So it's worth a consideration. It's 2.2 thousand. And the truth is, when someone does this, and you've got an overpair, you're often beat. Yes. And Aaron's thinking so about it. It's just 1,560 more to just a pot size bet. Yeah, but he says it's just a pot size bet. He's actually trying to make it sound like saying it's not an, an insane overbet. Please don't fold. At this right? point, Batiste thinks he has the best hand for sure. I would think so if I had it. He's doing fundraiser. I'd buy a lot of outs. <laughs> doing fundraiser. Uh -huh. Is it good for Batiste to move in, by the way? I think it's fine once Aaron bets 600. Yeah, it's such a big bet. You're committed to this pot anyway. Might as well fade all the weird cards coming that could beat you. There's just so many strange things that can happen. If Aaron has tens or jacks, there's some bad cards that will scare him and you can't get paid. Clubs might scare him. All these things. And might scare you too. This way you just, you just move it in now and don't worry about it. And that's what's happening. Of course, as you see... If Aaron does find a call, but he says only the queen of clubs to bail him out of this situation. Right, a queen was folded. I mean, don't you have to call? Doesn't Batiste just have too many draws? Could Batiste... Right, that's the question. <laughs> Batiste looked pretty comfortable there. Yep. Because he thinks he has the best hand. <laughs> I feel like this is it's gonna be a long slow death for Batiste <laughs> I don't see Aaron actually folding kings here on this board you just don't want me to show you the bluff no I don't mind you showing me the bluff I just like winning. Probably not a bluff. And then, not, yeah, no, I think you think you got something. <laughs> <laughs> I, you think I think I have something? I saying? think that you think you have something. No. You have a pretty good hand too. No. <laughs> well, now Batiste for sure thinks he's ahead. If I was Batiste, I think he has no, ace eight or something. <laughs> I have a chance. I'm saying I have a chance. We all have a chance. Two more cards to go. I have a chance makes it sound like a draw. Yeah. I mean, he's 100% believes he has the best hand, if he didn't already. He's trying to talk Aaron into a call. <laughs> I'm saying he has money back anyway. He can, even if he loses his pot, he can keep playing, so. Well, really, how about, I've got That's kings okay. and... Yeah, yeah, he's gonna call. you got to make that call. That's a good call. And they're not going to turn the cards up, it looks like. Oh, yeah. that is... The one-outer comes. The queen of clubs comes in, and Batista's going to oh. show the winner, and Aaron is going to show oh, everyone. Oh, so look, look at, at Wonka. Wonka's reaction. What a turn. What a turn, indeed. <laughs> 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 what an incredible hand. This is the biggest pot in the history of... Uh, of the game. Him. And you saw Batiste didn't react strongly when the Queen of Clubs came because he thought he might have lost on that card. He, yeah, that's he right. He thought Aaron might have made a flush on that card. Aaron said, you know, I have I have ways to win. I can, I can win. And so that is like, well, I guess the board could pair. Turns out... Yeah, Batiste wanted to run out like just deuce-deuce, but that was not going to do it for him. And all by the, the river, chips. By the river, he felt okay, though, because it did pair the of seven. Of course, of course. Nice uh, catch. Nice catch. All the chips get pushed. So good 
when you're Batiste and you have all those chips in front of you and you're like, now I have twice that many. That's a good feeling. It is. It's those a are, very good feeling. Those are U.S. dollar chips. Yep. And that, gonna, by the way, is the last hand of poker time it is. for this week. Come on back next week. We're going to watch Action Aaron, see how he responds to this. We're going to see how Batiste plays with a 5K stack in front of him at 5-5. Five, five. Holy moly, it's 1,000 blinds. He said holy moly again, guys. I always do. So we'll see you next week, guys.